Greetings, fellow ARC players! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to know so you can tame your very first Pteranodon. So, let's go! Headshot. The Pteranodon, which is commonly referred to as a Terra, is quite possibly the best early game dino in ARC. It's going to allow you to travel the map much more quickly, and you can kill high-level dinos with it, which means you can level up rapidly once you get your hands on one. The largest barrier to entry you're going to encounter is the fact that you'll have to be at least level 38 to build a saddle for your Pteranodon. Even if you are high enough level, the saddle isn't the cheapest thing to build. You'll need 75 chitin or keratin, or a combination of both, 125 fiber, and 230 hide. By the time you reach level 38 and are able to craft a Terra Saddle, you should have a berry collecting dino, like a Triceratops. Pteranodons wake up fairly quickly after being knocked out, so it's important to have a stockpile of narcotics ready beforehand. So assuming that you do have the ability to collect large amounts of narco berries and you know how to craft narcotics, let's go over the checklist of things you're going to need before you knock a Pteranodon out. You've got a saddle, crafted, and in your inventory. You have a bow, or preferably a crossbow, with at least 10 Trank arrows. And don't forget to equip the Trank arrows to the bow you'll be using. Next on the list is several bolas, but you really shouldn't need more than just one or two. Um, you also have 20 narcotics, or more, to keep it sedated. And the next thing you want to bring is a spyglass. It's not a requirement that you have one, but it will allow you to more easily pick out which Terra you want to tame. Pteranodons spend most of their time flying around, but they like to land every once in a while, so it's nice knowing what level the Terra is before waiting for it to land. So, for example, you know, you probably don't want to waste your time waiting for a Terra to land just to find out it's only like a level 5 or something. To build a spyglass, you're going to need to find two crystal, but if you don't want to spend the time finding crystal, you can proceed with a taming mission without a spyglass. If you do decide to go spyglass-less, uh, you can just wait for one to land, and they're not spooked by you, so you can just walk up to it, get real close, and see what level it is that way. Anyway, the last thing you'll need is access to raw meat to feed the Terra during the taming process. Terras do prefer raw prime meat, which you can get from larger herbivores and carnivores, but raw prime meat spoils very quickly. Terras like raw mutton even more than raw prime meat, but mutton can be only harvested from ovises, which can be hard to find. If you're really hardcore, you can tame your first Terra with kibble made from dodo eggs, but to be honest, I wouldn't worry all that much about going overboard trying to find the best food for your first Terra. Just use raw meat. You can go for a perfect tame later. The most important thing at this stage is to simply tame a Terra that you can use. Alright, so let's just quickly summarize that checklist. You've got the saddle crafted, and it's in your inventory. You've got a bow, or preferably a crossbow, with 10 Trank arrows or more. Uh, you've made sure to equip the bow with the Trank arrows. You verified that you've got at least 20 narcotics in your inventory. You also have at least two bolas ready to go. Optionally, you'll have a spyglass to verify the Terra's level while it's flying around. And you've also got access to raw meat. Alright, finally! Now it's time to track down a Terra that you want to tame. Terras can be found in many different areas on ARC maps that have pteranodons, but usually you'll find them flying around bodies of water where they'll then briefly land on the beach. Once the Terra has landed and you've identified their level, throw a bola at it. This will keep it grounded while you knock it out. Shoot it in the beak with Trank arrows until it collapses, and it really shouldn't take a whole lot of Trank arrows before this happens. Now that's tranquilized, put the narcotics into its inventory. At this point, you can go out and look for larger dinos to kill for raw prime meat, or an ovis to kill for raw mutton, 
but don't worry about that too much. Raw meat will work just fine for now, especially if you're limited on your ability to obtain the higher quality foods. You can dump the raw meat into its inventory right away, or you can wait for its food level to drop a little bit. I personally like to wait for a little while for its food levels to go down before I feed it. Now all you have to do is monitor its sedation level, also known as its torpor level. Once the torpor bar drops to around half, force feed it several narcotics to keep it sedated. As time goes by, its food bar will deplete and it will eat the raw meat that's in its inventory. Every time it eats, you'll see the taming bar progress. At this point all you have to do is make sure it doesn't wake up and keep an eye on the raw meat it has left to eat in its inventory. If it's starting to run out of raw meat to munch on, just force feed it some narcotics and go grab more raw meat as quickly as you can. Once the taming bar fills up, you're done. You've tamed your first Pteranodon. Just equip it with the saddle and you're good to go. I always feel like the taming of my first Terra in an arc file is like a catalyst to greater things. You can traverse the map much more quickly and with much more ease, and you can level up way more quickly. Speaking of which, here's a quick tip. You can level extremely fast by finding alpha dinos and killing them with your Terra. If you can find an explorer note nearby before killing an alpha dino, you're almost guaranteed a couple levels, even if you're already at a high level. The barrel roll move does a lot of damage, and it's a great way to kill almost any dino. Every barrel roll takes a good chunk of stamina, so I would recommend leveling your Terra's stamina first and foremost. Stamina is the most important stat for a Terra, in my opinion. Then melee damage, then weight or speed. But how you allocate the stats is totally up to you and your goals for your Pteranodon. Another thing I think that is really important to mention is that you'll need to watch out for raptors, thylacolios, Microraptors, and any other dino that can knock you off your Terra. You might be right in the middle of killing a T-Rex or Alpha Dino, and you'll swoop down for a barrel roll without noticing a pack of raptors nearby. Next thing you know, you're getting knocked off your Terra, you get killed, and your Terra flies off or gets killed as well. I have over 3000 hours in ARC, and that is probably the most likely way for me to die in any file, so just be aware of that. So if you are watching this tutorial, you're somewhat likely to be a newer ARC player, so here's just a couple more tips that should help you out. I touched on it briefly earlier, but I do want to stress it a little bit more. The Pteranodon runs off of stamina. One of the best uses of a Terra is for leveling your character more quickly by killing large and dangerous dinosaurs. The barrel roll attack is going to be your best friend for killing monsters and can be really easy to forget about your stamina bar. If your stamina bar runs out in the middle of killing a T-Rex, you will be forced to land. And if that happens, the T-Rex is no longer your only concern. You are also more likely to get knocked off your mount by raptors. Increasing melee damage can offset how many barrel rolls you need to perform to kill something though too. So. A good balance of stamina and melee damage is going to make your Terra an awesome killing machine, which, in turn, allows you to make levels more efficiently. So one last tip I would like to impart on you is to not skimp on finding a high level Terra. You could tame the first Terra you came across, but if you can find a max level Terra, or one that's close to it, you are that much closer to breeding Pteranodons. Once you have a perfect or near perfect male and female Terra, you can start breeding them, and bred Terras are going to be extremely useful for you. Even if you are playing on a map with Argents and Wyverns, bred Terras still stand up pretty well in the late game. They're faster than Argents, they do more damage than Argents, and Terras are also much more agile than Wyverns or Argents. So, I would recommend going for a quality Terra if possible. If you can tame a low level Pteranodon, you should be able to tame a high level one as well, no problem. It'll just take a little bit longer, which means you'll need to use a little bit more meat and a few more narcotics during the taming process. If you have any questions about the actual taming process as a whole, feel free to check out my tutorial on how to do that. 
I dive more into the details in that tutorial. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I try to be really good about checking the comments and addressing your questions. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you did, please consider dropping a thumbs up on this video. That would help me out a ton. And if you really like this video, a subscription would be amazing. I've got a lot of other ARC videos on the Havoc Gaming channel you can check out, and there's more to come. So, thank you very much for watching, enjoy your Terra, and Godspeed. Godspeed.